My brain doesn't stop. I'm thinking about her all night. I'm thinking about what needs to be done next, how to do it. I think stepping back and prioritizing and helping the caregiver have the balance is really, really a big plus of the role. As a system, we're working very hard to develop resources to support our caregivers too. He's still my guy. I mean, he's still the guy I fell in love with. You know, it's just sometimes it's hard to talk, you know, but he's still the same person. Hi there, I'm Christy McDonald. Thanks so much for joining me here on Local 4 Plus. I know there are a lot of caregivers out there, people who are caring for aging parents, or maybe they're caring for a spouse or a special needs child. I've been a caregiver, so I understand the road, and that's why I wanted to do a series on caregiving, so people know that they are not alone, and also to help them link up with resources that can help them on this journey. First off, here are some stories on what it's like to be a caregiver, because caregiving really is the ultimate love story, helping those out who we love when they need it most. What do you want for lunch? Laura and Miles G. know they're lucky. Theirs is a later-in-life love. After meeting in high school, they found each other again 13 years ago. He was a burnout. I was a band geek. You thought she was pretty beautiful, right, Miles? Oh, yeah. But only four years into their marriage, Laura watched Miles have a stroke. I mean, I can close my eyes and I can still see it. I mean, I can see it happening. And he's just looking at me, and he's not talking. And I'm like, oh, boy, this is okay. I said, all right, I said... Can you smile? Can you smile for me? And uh, it was a crooked smile. Life suddenly changed in their Heartland home. After hospital stays and a harrowing recovery, Miles' mobility is limited. His thoughts hard to gather. Laura went from spouse to caregiver. We figured out every day. I just wish there could be one day where we could just have a conversation where he could say exactly what he wants to say. We create a checklist for him. Laura is one of an estimated 1.3 million people here in Michigan who is a caregiver to a family member. But the common thread is caring for someone um, who needs you. Kimberly Bishop is the associate state director of the AARP here in Michigan. She says it's hard for people who care for a spouse or aging parent to even identify in that way whether it's a family member, a neighbor, with things like um, preparing meals or, or food or managing medication or finances. So they don't even really consider themselves um, family caregivers. And I think the first step is making sure that they realize that they are so that they can connect with resources. Kim says over 30% of family caregivers spend over 20 hours a week doing the work. It's time consuming and also costly. The estimate is that um, that is 14 and a half billion with a B dollars in unpaid care in terms of what they're giving. It can be lonely and stressful. And then this is the binder just from the stroke. Laura says her key to juggling it all is a flexible work schedule. She now works from home in a back bedroom. She makes sure Miles can reach 911 if he needs it. And the big binder coordinates insurance, doctor's appointments and medications. And it becomes a different partnership. It is. It's a different, it's, um, sometimes I don't want to be in charge, you know? Who's going to, you know, sometimes I, sometimes I just think, well, who's going to take care of me if something happens? You know, and, and that's the other thing, too, is, you know, my fear is if something happens to me, and he's here. Miles and Laura do have a wonderful sense of humor with each other. He's still the chef of the family. Uh, lasagna is... But it's the ultimate love story that Laura wanted to share with us so others who are caregivers don't feel so alone. He's still my guy. I mean, he's still the guy I fell in love with. You know, it's just sometimes it's hard to talk, you know, but he's still the same person. You doing good? Did you sleep good? Yeah. It's quiet time for Mama Liz on a Friday morning, with her daughter Beth Griffith Manley on one side, a Lifetime movie on TV, and her home health aide Sharon on the other couch. She won't remember people's names, but she remembers faces. My brain doesn't stop. I'm thinking about her all night. I'm thinking about what needs to be done next how to do it. Beth knows what it's like to juggle life. As a professional touring singer, a former contestant on The Voice, and recognizable personality here in Detroit. But it all became so complicated when her mom had a stroke five years ago. She was an instant caregiver. 
No one yes. tells you no. when all of a sudden you're a caregiver no. how to figure it out. No. How steep was that learning curve for you? It was like me starting at zero and then shooting to 10. And what do we do? How do we figure this out? But how do we make sure she's okay? Beth knew she wanted to care for her mom at home and at first tried to meet every need around the clock by herself and with limited family help. I felt like there was a time when I was losing myself. I looked in the mirror and I said, oh my God, I don't even look like myself. I don't feel like myself. I'm not sleeping. I was trying to do too much, balancing a lot. And you may not be able to step away for long periods of time. So you can feel trapped and that's not a good way to feel. So there needed to be a change. Thankfully, her mother had signed up for long-term care insurance years ago, so there was a little money to hire in-home care for only several hours a day. That's how they brought in Sharon. Beth pays the other half of her eight hours out of pocket. And I get my mother up in the morning. Um, Sharon, my mother will say, where, where, where is she? She gets her dress cleaned up. She prepares her breakfast. For hair appointment, doctor's appointments, um, Sharon will take her because I'm on the road. If Beth is on tour, it's a backup system of relatives, her husband, Louis, and Sharon with FaceTiming every day. We have extra help. I appreciate and love all of them for, for helping because it's, it's a big job. Work it out with somebody the best that you can to try to see if somebody can come in and relieve you. <laughs> Whenever you guys are able to work that out, so you have some time to look forward to, to be yourself and to, to take care of yourself. Because if you can't take care of yourself and you're falling apart, you can't properly take care of that person. It's a life that Beth reminds herself to breathe through and be grateful that she gets to love and care for her mom when she needs it most. My mother is so blessed that she's still here and that we're able to give her quality of life while she's still here. She's, she seems to be very happy. Laura and Beth are really great examples of what the reality is that caregivers face. And sometimes we find ourselves in this position and it's shocking and it's difficult and we really don't know what to do next. Well, the Area Agency on Aging 1B has a new program that's training caregivers to help them out. This is the binder. For Laura G, caring for her husband Miles after a stroke, she learned how to get organized quickly. When he's got a doctor's appointment, I have to go with him because he can't, he can't remember what they've said. He can't process what they're saying. You doing good? For Beth Griffith, finding help with her mom with dementia was paramount. I think everybody feels in the beginning, this is my mom, I can handle this. And then you have to work. And then you have to go to the grocery store. You have to get your hair done. There's little things in life that you do and you start to realize you do need someone to help you. These little details of caregiving that make all the difference and no one teaches you, caregivers sometimes have to figure it out on their own. But there are resources to help our caregivers no matter where they are in the journey. Because a lot of caregivers don't self-identify, they wait until it's almost too late to get connected to the various resources that are available to them. Um, and there are so many resources out there. Julie Lowenthal coordinates volunteer and caregiver services at the Area Agency on Aging 1B. That covers all of Southeast Michigan, except for Detroit, which has its own dedicated agency. 1B is now piloting a caregiving coach program, the second of its kind in the country. And for family caregivers to connect with a coach who's been through exactly what they've been through, um, and the coaches can provide support, um, advice, resources, and give the caregivers a place to connect with someone who understands them. The agency currently has 12 coaches and 22 caregivers enrolled in the program. Well, definitely um, providing a sounding board for people to speak with, mm -hmm. to acknowledge and to kind of process that they're not alone. Um, in the journey of being a caregiver. And that there are resources available to Definitely. them. Definitely. Sherry Cook is one of the new coaches. She helps come up with questions for doctor's appointments, strategies for placing people in long-term care, and finding the right programs. And I think sometimes even validating the foresight and the, and the exhaustion of thinking about what the next step is is also very, very big. Mm -hmm. And so that's why part of our role is to help navigate the big picture and to decide what the priorities are that week versus looking at it all in a nutshell. And I think stepping back and prioritizing and helping the caregiver have the balance um, is really, really a big plus of the, of the role. 
Beth and Laura have both learned a few things as they walk this road to be able to give advice to other caregivers. You need to just take a moment for yourself. Mm -hmm. Write down, I have probably five notebooks in my bedroom, just notes, things I have to do. And remember yourself. The mountain of paperwork and just keeping it organized and, and use the patient advocates at the hospitals. Absolutely reach out to them if you're overwhelmed. It's a lot of great information there. And if you want to hook up with the Area Agency on Aging 1B or the one in Detroit, just head to our website at clickondetroit.com. We have all of the caregiving resources for you there on that page. You know, caregiving is exhausting. It's a lot of forward thinking and troubleshooting of what comes next. And as caregivers, it's sometimes hard to take care of ourselves. And that can lead to burnout. Doctors say there's a couple of things that we have to take into consideration to watch out for ourselves. Dr. Jim Snyder is a neuro-oncologist at Henry Ford. He treats patients with brain and spine tumors. And over the years, he's noticed that patients are only as strong as the support around them. I think we have not paid enough attention to uh, family members, caregivers, uh, friends, and, and all the other people uh, impacted. So as a system, we're working very hard to develop resources to support our caregivers, too. There are an estimated 1.3 million caregivers in Michigan who come in many forms, caring for an aging parent like Beth does, or a spouse like Laura does, or for a special needs child, a family member with cancer. The stressors can add up and become overwhelming. I come across people all the time that have spent two years as a caregiver and haven't seen their own doctors or haven't slept a full night in that period. And Dr. Snyder says there are signs that caregivers need to watch out for. Signs of burnout might include being short with others, uh, not sleeping enough, um, having a hard time concentrating and focusing. I think the one thing I hear from caregivers too is like, oh, I don't have time for that. Uh, I don't have time for self-care. I'm already boxed between maybe a full-time job and, and caring for someone that they love is, is a full-time job as well. No doubt about it. So that's a big concern of mine too, is uh, caregivers feel like they've got too much to do. We have caregiver support groups. Uh, we have all different types of uh, support for our caregiver population. So we have our therapy classes and mindfulness groups and uh, meal planning groups. And uh, we have this really amazing caregiver concierge program where caregivers can connect with Henry Ford and connect with someone to uh, help better understand how we can meet their needs. All right, here are some good tips from doctors and from some of our local four viewers who have watched this series on caregiving. First off, make sure that you are up to date on your own checkups. If you're taking a loved one to a doctor, make sure that you are taking care of yourself as well. Number two, ask a loved one's doctor for resources for caregivers. They might have a lot of great information for you. Also, we've mentioned this before, but the Area Agency on Aging and the AARP, they have great materials as well. You can tap in to that. Remember, click on Detroit.com. Now, this one might seem a little trivial, but but if you are feeling that stress, take 10 minutes for yourself. Just remove yourself to another area, another room, some deep breathing techniques. It really can help calm the stress. And then finally, find a friend that you can offload a task or two each week. You don't have to go through this alone. And you know, it got me to thinking, for those of you who maybe aren't even quite in the caregiving space yet, chances are you're going to be someday. So how do you have that tough conversation and prepare for it? Well, the AARP has a program. Well, you look pretty today. Are you ever really prepared to care for a loved one, a well, parent, so, a spouse, yeah. in a different way than you ever have? What do you want for lunch? Here in Michigan, there are over 1.3 million caregivers. We'll all be caregivers at some point. Our state population is getting older, and surveys show that as people age, they want to stay in their homes, but will need help. The prevention and understanding what may be in front of you and having those conversations with your loved one before anything happens is, is critical. And sometimes we don't want to talk about that's uncomfortable for us. It can be uncomfortable, but what's more uncomfortable is being in the situation and not being clear on what your loved one would want and feel like feeling like you're guessing at it. Kim Bishop is with AARP Michigan and has a few planning tools to help start the difficult conversations. Well, prepare to care um, really helps you with um, having things all in one place, for example, knowing insurance policy numbers. Um, if you need to do 
uh, long-term care planning, if you, uh, do you have your will and, and your estate plan? So it might be financial, medical, and just a checklist of things um, that you need to do so that you can, you don't have to do them all at the same time. Kim says it's important to know policy numbers like health and life insurance, power of attorney, and even passwords. Add to that the option of paid care, living facilities, or eventually changing your home. It might be, you know, moving into a one-story home because I know, you know, mom expects to come live with me. But it might be installing grab bars in the bathroom. You know, it may be a small thing. It might be as small as um, removing a bunch of area rugs because they're tripping hazards. It's, it's always easier to do something when you're not in crisis mode because you're, yeah. you're able to think more clearly. So that's why I like prepare to care because it's those upfront conversations when there's not the stress of, you know, an illness or a hospitalization. It's good to have those tough conversations earlier than later. A lot of great resources there. I also want to thank you for sending in all the emails that you did. These are just some of the emails that I received from you telling your caregiving stories and, and your journeys. And I wanted to include some lines from some of the emails. Go ahead, take a look. Anita wrote to us, thank you for recognizing that we're out there existing. Catherine wrote, thanks for letting me vent. I know I have it much easier than many, but stress is stress. Kathy wrote me, there are days when all I want to do is cry all day from being tired. Dementia is such a horrible disease. At least I know she is safe with us, loved, and well taken care of. Thanks for listening. And Greg wrote, my mom is a full-time caregiver for my dad. I know she needs help for her own mental health, but finds it hard to ask. We heard a lot of that. And Eunice wraps it up really nicely for us. She wrote, what I learned from being a caregiver is ask for help, be solution focused, develop a self-care regimen, set limits and boundaries, schedule a me day, and as the saying goes, you can't pour from an empty cup. Thanks again for sharing all of those things. You know, we are here to listen and we are here to connect you to the resources that, that you need. So just go to clickondetroit.com. We have an entire caregiving page there and hope you can find out some good information. That's gonna do it for me, for all of us here at Local 4. I'm Christy McDonald. Take care and we'll see you next time.